in the year, Connor and Hank went out on an epic ride to see what would happen if they didn't eat anything at all. Obviously, Connor bonked pretty badly and vowed that he'd never do it again. Yeah, here I am, again. Except this time, applied nutrition have sent us a load of carb-filled on-bike fuel for Manon. Manon to have. We're going out to smash a few climbs, yet once more, there's a catch. Yeah, Manon gets to fuel for this ride entirely with carbohydrates, whereas Connor has to eat foods that are just high in fat, and I'm gonna eat all of the protein. Theory tells us what will probably happen, but we're stupid enough to see what will really happen. This is carbs versus fats versus proteins. Oh God, that is disgusting. Why is your glove orange? Seek spice. This is the scene of our experiment today. The famous cold Urbana down. Okay, it's not famous, but we have used it in several videos, such as the ones with Andrew Feather. Anyway, what we're gonna do is ride up and down this climb doing efforts until we all bonk using our respective macronutrients. Go until we blow. Basically an Everesting, yep. if and you want is, it to be. This is the first attempt and we probably should show you what we're going to eat on this ride. So let's get to the top and unpack a little bit. Yeah, I've, I've brought some right treats. I've got some good, good stuff. Right then, we're at the top of the climb, first rep is done. Let's go through our pockets, see what we have to eat today. Well, I've got this classic cycling snacks. I've got good old rice cakes with a bit of Oreo in. I've got some energy gels and I've got some carb mix in my drink too. Perfect, the yep. archetypal cyclist, what you should have on the bike. Nice, perfect diet. Me, on the other hand, got a lot of fat. Starting off with my piece de resistance, avocados, lots of them. Brought a spoon, pistachios. Got some almond butter, I've got some almonds. Mmm, check out this. Lard, lovely, lovely lard. I've also got some desiccated coconut, which has just fallen out of my nose bag. I did put this out to people and ask them what they think would happen to me on this ride, so I'm just gonna run through a few replies. I think you might need a few toilet stops. I'm not gonna lie, mate, I'm concerned you may yourself while going up a steep hill. yourself and bonking. Vomit, oh, that's a bit different to, to pooing. I'm not um, riding behind you, Connor. Yeah, more, more poo. Um, this was my favourite one, actually. Clearly, you're going to to yourself. What about you, Ollie? What have you got in your pockets? A carton of egg whites. You're oh. not eating that. Lovely. It's pasteurised. Pasteurised. Yeah, it's pasteurised. Packet of tuna. Yum, Lovely. Yum. High in protein. It's got a high protein, low fat yoghurt. That'll be good. And then I've got some cooked treats that I've specially prepared. All the protein, yeah. Just your standard meal on the bike, isn't it? Just a chicken breast in the pocket. Right then, well, that's what we're eating today. Guess we better hit the climb. Time to go up and down a few times. Carbs provide a highly efficient fuel source to the body. Manon has definitely pulled the long straw here. Perfect for high, intense riding when oxygen is at a premium and we are going like the clappers. Excess carbs can be easily stored in your liver and muscles as glycogen, providing enough energy for around 90 to 120 minutes of tough cycling. Hence the term carbo-loading. Glucose is essentially our body's principal energy source and carbs or glycogen can be easily broken down into glucose which is why, when cycling, carbs are king, or queen. I've actually lost count what number rep I'm on now, but we're well into it. It's starting to get a little bit harder each rep now. I was fine for maybe like the first six, it kind of all felt the same. Now it's just starting to get a little bit harder, but I still feel like I've got quite a lot in me. Just trying to eat little and often. 
let me tell you a little bit more about Applied Nutrition, who are helping me with my fueling for today's ride. They're a sports nutrition brand that make a variety of products from energy gels, protein powder and energy drinks. They are used by some of the world's best athletes and today by me too. I'll be fueling with their energy and caffeine gels and their endurance energy drink. Okay, so gels like these ones are great and they play a big part in your fueling when you're out on the bike. But you don't really want to solely rely on these. They can be quite unnecessary, it can be quite harsh on your stomach and on your bank account too when you have to go back and get more. These work best when they're paired with real foods like rice cakes or bananas or any homemade snacks. So I've come very well prepared with a variety of different snacks. Four reps down, back to the bottom. Think of gels like Firelight as they provide fast, quick energy. Whereas your rice cakes and real food is more like firewood, slow burning, providing energy over a long period in a sustainable way, but keeping you feeling full. A good rule is if you're planning on riding long and steady, try and rely on real foods as much as you can and use that as your foundation. Then if you're planning to do some high intensity stuff like hill reps or the group you're with is planning to do a hard effort, that's when you want a gel to really boost your energy and the gels really do come into their own. Oh, five reps done. So I was a little bit hungry, so a mouthful of almonds. Chug of olive oil. Oh, yeah. It's nice on salad, but I don't know if I'd advise drinking it straight. Don't do this at home. Fat is actually the most concentrated form of energy compared to carbs and proteins, with nine calories per gram of fat. Also, even the leanest of athletes have enough fat reserves in their muscle fibers and their fat cells to keep them going about 100,000 calories. But there is a catch. Fat is slow to digest and be used as a source of energy and it requires time to be transported to your muscles and a lot of oxygen is needed to convert fat to usable energy. So you're going to have to reduce your ride intensity to rely on it. Some research says that when you're riding at anything over 65% of your VO2 max, your body will predominantly look to carbohydrates as an energy source you simply aren't getting in enough oxygen to process those fats. For me, that's around 245 watts. Anything under that though, and fat can contribute around 50% of the muscle's energy needs. Essentially, with my high fatty foods, with my desiccated coconut, my avocados, my olive oil, well, I'm good for very steady, slow riding. But as soon as I up the intensity, as soon as I dig deep, me eating into my glycogen stores. And once they're gone, theory is I'm gonna slow to a snail's pace. Although, I've never done this before. I've never solely relied on fatty foods to fuel myself out on the bike. So, I really am heading into the unknown here. Whew. Starting to get a little peckish. I'm gonna begin with this nice tender chicken breast. Not the easiest thing to eat on the bike. But, look at that. Okay, so around two hours in now, 10 reps in. I think Ollie, a little bit ahead. 13 reps. Protein really coming into its own and- um, Still got a bit of a chicken breast left. I think, disgusting. I think that was, looks disgusting. Gonna save that for later. You've got, um, why is your glove orange? Teak spice. How are you feeling, Connor? I'm feeling all right. I feel like I'm starting to tire. I mean, we have done 10 reps of a climb. It's so two hours, yeah. Yeah, and I think this is the crunch point, really. This is when we're going to start. Make or break. Yeah, we're going to start to run out of those glycogen stores. We're going to be relying on what we've kind of been eating every so often during our reps. Um, so yeah, heading into the unknown now. Under normal circumstances, our bodies only use protein for 5% of our daily energy needs. It's mainly used to build, maintain and repair body tissues, as well as to synthesize important enzymes and hormones. Protein is a macronutrient more suited to recovery and building muscle. It's also quite filling, keeping that hunger at bay. 
but is it what you should rely on during a long ride? Probably not. Because your body can convert some excess protein into glucose, which is, well, sugar, carbs, it is a way that you can fuel your body. It's just far less efficient to do it that way than having just carbs. The way to think of it would be, kind of if, instead of giving your car petrol or carbs, you're giving your car raw crude oil and then getting it to convert the crude oil into petrol so it can use it. Once those glycogen stores are used up, you're going to slow down. By how much? I guess I'm gonna find that out today, but at least I won't be having diarrhea like Connor. Mm. Mm. Oh. 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 Mm. oh, it was as water. Mm. Yeah, it's nice, that. Right, back to my lovely carbohydrates. Five minutes before a climb or a big effort, you don't want to be rambling in your back pockets, unwrapping a bar and trying to eat it. This is when a trusty gel really does come in handy. Quick and effective. Get that down you and you can have a big boost of energy. These bad boys actually have 23 grams of carbohydrates in them. It's recommended that you consume 0.5 to 1 gram of carbs per kilogram of body weight per hour. So do the maths for yourselves and make sure you don't overdo it as this is when you can put pressure on your digestion and experience stomach cramps which will actually plummet your performance. It's a constant thing too. Every 20 to 30 minutes you want to be eating something to hit your hourly target. We shouldn't not consider fat as an energy source that can be great for fueling low intensity, long endurance rides, but sparing glycogen stores at those lower intensity levels and delaying the onset of fatigue. So if you're heading out for a big ride, six, seven, eight hours plus we're talking here at very low intensity levels, not the worst idea. But as soon as the intensity ups, as soon as the pace quickens, like it's starting to on this climb, well, you're gonna to begin to struggle. Easier moments is when you want to eat your real foods. At the top of a descent maybe, when your heart rate is gonna be low, give yourself more time to digest, and it's a little bit easier on your stomach. Using a sports drink is another really good way of keeping those foundations of carbs topped up. Today I'm using the Endurance Energy Drink by Applied Nutrition, and this has around 50 grams of carbs per serving. But the great thing with energy drinks and energy powders is that they can be adapted. So you could maybe use the 50 full grams of carbs and then rely on real foods a little bit less. Or depending on what ride you're doing, you could have a little bit less carbs on your bottles and rely on more food. It is really adaptable, which is great. So what are the guys getting up to? I wonder if Connor's eating his coconut yet. I can't see anything. I want coconut in my eyes. Oh, I'm starting to feel it now, if I'm honest. Just don't quite have the power I did at the start. Beginning to feel a bit empty. Not the same kind of snap in my legs. And I would say to you guys at home, I don't try this. I wouldn't recommend it. It's not the sort of thing you want to do, especially the sort of fats I'm eating. Basically, you're going to run into some gastrointestinal issues. Diarrhea, bloating, nausea that sort of stuff. Probably explains why I'm not feeling the greatest. A lot of riders get their protein intake wrong. The maximum your body can absorb is 1.6 grams per kilo of body weight a day, which is actually very easy to achieve. If you eat more than this, well, it's not really gonna hurt you, but what will happen is your body will break down that protein into fatty acids or glucose, or it'll excrete it, come out in your wee. This means there's no point taking on extra protein than you need. And if you're, you know, taking 1.6 grams per kilogram of body weight, that's the upper amount. That's if you're in heavy training or racing. But if you're sedentary, or having a rest day, then 
You only need actually about 0.8 of a gram per kilogram of body weight a day. There's another reason that you might want to consume some protein during your rides, and that's to help your recovery. In particular, your recovery the next day. And it's for this reason that some riders in Grand Tours have been known to take protein during stages. Another mistake riders can make is having all their protein in one go. Your body can only absorb a certain amount in kind of one sitting. And so it's more effective to have some maybe a few hours before you work out and then a few hours after. Have some, uh, some egg whites. Oh. Okay, we've called it a day. Well, I've called it a day because I've been the first to raise the white flag. I am absolutely just in a bag, in a bad, bad way. I don't feel, don't feel good at all. My stomach feels dreadful. My legs feel dreadful. My head feels dreadful. Nothing left. So I pushed on the last climb. I've done about 14 reps and I couldn't get over 240 watts. You think on the first climb I was managing 390, 400. So I just off, off a cliff. I, on the other hand, am faring significantly better than Connor, but I still don't feel great. I've managed 18 reps in the same amount of time, but I still feel flat. I, I don't feel like I can push on and ride at like a high intensity or anywhere near to my threshold where we know I'd be burning mostly carbs. I'm sort of able to chug along like a diesel, but at a power of 250 watts, I can see that my heart rate is consistently about 15 watts higher than what it should be. So I'm not, I'm not doing great. I don't feel like I'm in my body at the moment. Anyway, Manon, how, how are you feeling? I'm actually feeling all right. I mean, nowhere near as bad as Connor. I mean, I can hold my own head up, but obviously I'm a little bit tired because we've ridden for nearly three hours up a hill. But yeah, I feel pretty good. I feel like I could carry on. Um, obviously, I was getting a little bit slower towards the end, but yeah, not, not too bad. Obviously, I ate my way through the ride, kept snacking, but yeah, feeling all right. So I might actually carry on doing another three hours if, if you fancy it. No? Thanks, Applied Nutrition. Yeah, thanks. Well, if you've enjoyed this video, let us, uh, let us know and give us a thumbs up um, in the comments section. And also, if you've bonked uh, as bad as Connor has right now, also let us know in the comments section. Subscribe if you like what we do, and we'll see you in the next one. Connor, we need to get you some carbs, stat. I think I need to try and get home, maybe find a toilet. We need to get you some carbs. Some carbs, yeah. Just like, carbs. Let's get you some carbs. Let's get you some carbs. You'll be all right, mate. You'll be all right.